This is the um, the Enemy Hero Podcast slash Fan and Group slash Burn the Mighty's channel collab special. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, right before recording. We couldn't decide who is going to be, where we're going to put it up, but we're just going to talk about some stuff and then uh, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, so one of the topics is that I think we're going to start with is comparing 2016 to the year 2017. See yeah, which is we better. kind of wanted to like split between just like uh, like fandom discussions, but also like just things that were going on. Uh, I mean, Hero, do you think that 2017 is better than 2016 overall, or what? Um, I really don't know because I wanted to <laughs> see the full picture of like you know list all the events that happened in 16 and then all the stuff that happened in 17. Well, then again, the year for 17 isn't over. But like here's Close. like I know, but here's like one example that's a more recent topic is a uh, celebrity death or actor oh, yeah. or actor death because you know the more recent one right now was with Dragon Ball and then Adam West was this year right? Yes. Yeah. So there's West... so many though lately between this year and last year. Like I, uh-huh. it just feels like there's been a ton of celebrity deaths. Really, the last couple of years have been hitting us pretty pretty steadily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's true. Bulma's voice actress did die. The Japanese voice She wasn't even that old, really. Like, 57? Yeah, yeah, compared to, like, uh, everyone else on the Dragon Ball cast. The yeah, Japanese that's, that's really unfortunate. I heard about that. Like, that's uh, that, that's always sad to hear, man. Yeah, um, and then you got Chris absolutely. Ayers with his uh, problem with his lungs, I think, or throat. Wait, I didn't hear about that. What is it? He's um, got a problem with his lungs? Something, but the point is he actually has to go through surgery, and um, they had to... I think people, he was asking for help for money in order to have the operation, I'm assuming. I, I don't know the the exact details. Oh, wow. Well, I hope he's okay. Uh, that's, that's sad. I like Chris Harris. He's, he's cool. <laughs> yeah. Because, of course, we had Adam West yeah. this year, and then I'm, I'm trying to remember what happened last year exactly, because wasn't, um, uh, why am I forgetting names so badly today? <laughs> I feel bad. Well, I'll tell you what. We have the power of the internet, so I will look it up. 2016 Celebrity Deaths. <laughs> this will be a, a really fun topic, I'm oh, sure. No. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, Alright, here are some people oh, that died in 2016. If it loads for me. Okay. Who are these famous people? Okay, we got a little slideshow, too. Um, oh, wow. Let's see. I got like 95, alright, well, Whoa. okay, got a guy from MASH, uh, well, yeah, Carrie Fisher, it. died last year, Princess Leia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was one of and, the big yeah, ones. That, that, Wasn't also, uh, um, I'm forgetting his real name. No, 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 I'm forgetting his real name, but Spock. Oh, yeah, well, Letter Nimoy died like in 20... 15? 2015, yeah, he died a couple years ago, too. Mm. Yeah. No, I thought it was oh, last yeah. year, actually, but oh well, I'm getting confused now, but... No, I, no I, I, but it was only a couple years ago. Um, I'm trying to see some other people who might recognize. Um, uh, oh. Michael Massey died? Oh, he was like in... Oh, he was a, a minor villain in some stuff, but it looks like a bunch. Yeah, a bunch of people died. Um, oh, oh, Gene Wilder died. Willy Wonka. He died last year. Oh, didn't know about that one. Yep, young friend. Oh, maybe that's yeah, why they yeah, made that. Uh, oh, maybe that's why they made that Tom and Jerry movie then. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, yeah, Kenny Baker, uh, the R two D two guy, died last year too. Mm. Yes, yeah, so there was two Star Wars people. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go through these quickly. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, that one key. Oh, yeah, that's right. Anton Yelton. He played the Chekhov in the new Star Trek. He died. Mm-hmm. He was very young. He was like 27, like a bad car accident or something. Wait, well, was Prince last year? Uh, a Prince, I think, was last year. I'm trying to, I know I'm, I'm running through these to see if people we can recognize. Um, this is pretty long stuff. So, um, almost through. Oh yeah, Prince died last year. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Prince died, which sucked. A lot of people were really upset about that. 
you know, because his music had obviously had a pretty big impact on some people. I mean, I'll admit I wasn't like the the biggest Prince fan. You know, I was interested to see like the like, the effect that did have. Um, Twenty five more go. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, do, 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 do. And, oh, we, oh, that's right, Alan Rickman died, Professor Snape, he died, Hans Gruber, and, oh yeah, he died last year. That was sad. Um, uh, David Bowie died last year. Um, oh yeah, the guy from Phantasm died, the tall man. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple big ones last year, man. Um, I mean, 20, 2017's not over, but okay, let's let's look at this one. All right, and, and we'll compare. We'll see which one's worse, I guess. Oh. <laughs> All right, 20, okay, here we go. All right, 2017. Let's see what we got. Oh, well, it's already a higher number, 99 so far. The other one was 95. Well, I don't think we need to, um, like, explore every single one, because I, I think we're going to get too oh, no, distracted. I'll, I'll, <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. I'm just, like, running through them real quick because you wanted to know. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, there were a lot of deaths last year, which is kind of sad. I mean, I remember when, um, like, as you know, I'm a pretty big Star Trek fan, so when Leonard Nimoy died, I thought that was kind of sad. But, I mean, he was a bit older, I guess, but, you know, it's the idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Hefner died this year. <laughs> uh, Some good ones, actually. Uh, I didn't even know about some of these. Uh, a lot of musicians. Uh, well, I guess it depends partially on how you look at death. Like, I mean, you know, it's a part of life, but it seems like it's been a lot more... Uh, is, is it a higher amount, you think? Or is it just more stuff that we're beginning to notice because we're getting to that age, you know, where the, some of the people we grew up with might be, like, you know, kind of... Enter in that phase. Oh yeah, that's right. Chester Bennington died in Lincoln Park. Ugh. Ah, George yeah, Romero that's right. died. yeah. The Lincoln Park one was the more. Yeah, that was a big deal because uh, well, the, the point I want to get across before we get carried away with this is that uh, shit, I kind of lost my train of thought already. <laughs> I kind of feel like we're restarting the thing. <laughs> Well, okay, in, in your opinion, do you think it's worse? I mean, we got Roger Moore, Adam West. Well, well I don't uh, know, like, if it's necessarily worse what I was going to go with this. But the point is that everyone's become a little more aware of what's going on around them because of the advances of social media and all that. So, but also what you said earlier, which I'm assuming I'll keep in, was the, you know, the whole passage of life thing. Because, uh... I'm gonna try to keep this low because I don't want to, uh, my family to hear me when I say this. Okay. Yeah. Really? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm interested now. Yeah, it's because. What, uh, what's the secret stuff then? Well, no, it's because. Uh, well, here's the thing. When, when it comes to like the celebrity deaths, especially the one with Bulma right now, is that uh, I feel like a little upset. <laughs> um, not not just okay. to, not just because like you know the it's it's one of those cases where I feel like do you really like but you. you Everyone's making a big deal, and you know it's natural. But at the same time, thinking, but you you don't really know her because uh, earlier this year for me, like uh, real vets have like uh, close to the family are the ones that affect me more than than someone I never heard of before. You know? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So it's one of those things where I, I kind of get upset where uh, you know people get all this attention. And everyone's like you know having like this big uh, kind of ceremonious unison of a uh, of mourning. While I can't help but think, but maybe we should be concerned a bit more with the ones around us. You think you think people aren't as concerned about the ones around them well, as much not, as celebrities? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm just like putting it out there because at the same time, I, I will admit that I feel like a little. Uh, I would be a bit more frustrated, if, like if um, if somehow these other people get like more special attention compared to the you know to the re to the ones you know closer to you. You know, like, oh, like, all these people well, are like, you know, oh, everyone knows this person, you know, this person's passing because, you know, they, that, because he's famous, but if you take, like, someone's, uh, relative, like, from nowhere, you know, that, that was not getting much attention when, you know, there's genuine grief with that one. Well, well, you know, you bring up an interesting point, and, and that's kind of a, just, 
I think that's one thing that people could argue is kind of an issue with our society is that we don't like to talk about death very much. We don't like to really – we like to push it to the side. And uh, you're right. I mean there, there's always that argument that, hey, if you know, if somebody dies and it's not really related to you personally, you might think it's sad, but you're not really going to – it's not really going to leave much of an impact on you because it doesn't directly affect you. But you're right. Uh, you know, if if you you might be affected by a celebrity death because they're connected to your life. Like for instance, when Rob Williams died. I mean, that really affected a lot of people because they were united by that, by the memories that they might have had with his performances and whatnot. So they felt like they knew him personally, but they knew his performances. They knew a part of him. But you're right. They might get more upset about that than hearing about somebody's friend having a family member passing away. Which you're right. There should be more of an awareness and sympathy for that sort of stuff. Uh, but, but there kind of isn't like people, I think that it might be, that might be the start though. People being more aware of celebrity deaths, maybe because if they're more aware of the effect that could have on people around them, maybe that could make us more aware of what goes on with each other's lives. Cause it, it depends on who you interact with. I think some people are more sensitive to that sort of thing, but I don't know. Do, do you think a lot of people don't pay attention to that? I wouldn't know for sure because I haven't exactly been the most social of people. But at the same time, it seems that um, whenever people commit something, whether it's a good or bad thing, people will find out about it. And it's usually yeah. because of you know the way uh, people are these days with their tech. I'm not saying that technology is a bad thing or not, but I kind of feel that people are getting a little, maybe a little too clingy to it. <laughs> what do you mean? Could you elaborate? Um, let me think, let me think. Like, for example, there's a certain ad going around about a, about a certain car. I forgot what brand it is, but the point is that the, uh, in the commercial, you see these two people driving in the car, and then as they're driving, like, someone with the phone walks right in front of them. Then the car just stops, and but the car stopped on its own, so the guy walking on the phone is okay. And he's not even aware that the car was there as he walks away, and he said, oh, look, the car actually stopped on its own, so they're promoting that. And I kind of feel so the fact, like from... yeah, the the fact that they're promoting a car that could <laughs> potentially prevent accidents of you know some guy walking with their phone out, <laughs> and it but wasn't the like the point is the person yeah. should be not walking with their phone and being more aware of what's around them. Yeah, but it, it's getting to the point where it's getting little out of hand, where now we have to take precautions, just you know, for that type of scenario. Because, I mean, uh, last, this relates to last year, with 2016. Remember the hype that was called um, Pokemon Go? Oh, yes, I do remember a little bit about Pokemon Go. I'm curious to see where this is going. <laughs> I remember, like, all the t all the inc random incidents that happened across the world. Uh, like, some people were, like, were breaking into places they weren't supposed to. People were finding, like, dead bodies. And then the third one was, like, people were getting, like... <laughs> Uh, like attacked by you know being threatened by knives and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Like people, people just like completely you know put logic out the window to go get into Pokemon Go. Quite the adventure. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I kind of feel like things are getting a little out of. I guess this all could start as something as simple as you know waiting in line for like the release of something new and you know spending the night outside and stuff. Like maybe that's like a small small version of that and then <laughs> many many years later like 2016 17 we escalate to this shit because in 2016 also we had that whole clown scare which is a miracle that didn't happen this year given you know the it pennywise films because <laughs> imagine yeah. that <laughs> imagine if that should happen this year where people are actually going around with that and it supposedly was all a, a rumor that just got out of hand i don't know but <laughs> no no i, I well I believe people actually were doing it, but the thing is this, we're living in such a strange time where we could actually believe it, even if it was just a big rumor, you know, the people were genuinely scared of it. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I remember all the news reports that they said, like, you know, especially on Halloween to be careful of what was going on, so, and then this year there was like, no, no, no incidents as far as, well, not, nothing, actually, there were incidents, but nothing related to the clown, because... I don't know if there was any last year because I don't remember, but I know for sure, for certain that this year there was two major shootings in the USA. There were a lot more than that, apparently. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently, this was like I think we've actually had some kind of like mass shooting for almost every day of the year so far. Oh, yeah, like every day actually, of the year. 
Yep, the, uh, like, well, maybe not every day, but, like, somebody's actually been keeping track of it, and they, they post to my Facebook sometimes that they're, like, it was, like, 300, and, like, 50, 300 days in, like, 2017 and, like, 296 shootings. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, that's yeah, because the, the only ones that I was aware of, yeah, the only ones that I was aware of with the news was the one that, um, one was the Las Vegas thing, and then the more recent one was around, it was somewhere in Texas, where it was actually, took place in a church. Yeah, that's right, the Las Vegas one, that's true. Yeah, that, that one was just, he killed a lot of people, actually. Yeah. So that was pretty bad. Yeah, and then 2016, I'm like, well, pff, well I don't remember if there was... Because I remember the big, everyone's biggest well, concern that year was the whole election, and we all saw how that turned out. <laughs> well, yeah, it was it was the election, but it was also just the a lot of the ideas that were coming up, a lot of the nasty thoughts people were having, like all the racism, like you know, with all the you know the the riots and stuff down. I think it was in like uh, uh, was it uh, like South Carolina, you know, like that was really bad. Uh, a lot of the cop stuff, and I remember you you were like genuinely worried after Trump got elected. I think because you, know, you live kind of near the border, and you know, being Mexican American, you were like, "Is you know, is this thing going to be a real threat?" Because you know, Trump mm-hmm. was saying all these really outlandish things, and it was like, people were genuinely worried. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Is it as bad as everyone was thinking? Like, um, I mean, a year later. <laughs> well, I did go to like to. A, I didn't go that far deep in Mexico like this year, but even then, like mm-hmm. people will still say, you know, be careful regardless, but. Uh, I don't know because whenever I go there, I'm always am nervous. One, you know, just staying alert, wondering like if will something happen or not. But you know, nothing has like <laughs> come well, happen when I get there. Well, it's a little ridiculous, honestly. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, that and I'm not that I'm not like too deep into you know the actual like deep in the cities of Mexico. It's sort of like still around the border area. So, but then again, like even though it's a border, every day, uh, well, not every day, but every time I go across the border by the border patrol, there's always you know arms and per you know, armed individuals in military uniforms there, so... Ugh, so there's that. Kind of scary. Yeah. So, I don't know if, if things have gotten better since, uh... I guess the, fort- the only way I would know is if I lived there, but since I don't, and I haven't really heard anything major, because I know a couple years back, there was, like, a... Like, a bit of a fall... I want to say fall shooting, which is not the, ra- the accurate term, but basically, um... Basically, this young kid got shot because they thought he was in possession of a real firearm, but it was fake. Uh-huh. So, uh, I don't remember the details yeah, of that, that story. Yeah, sort of happens all the time. Yeah, so there was that. But, yeah, the, the point that I'm getting at is I don't, I don't know if, like, this is a sign of people, like, they need to learn to, like, behave themselves, or are we sort of, like, in a somewhat, um, maybe not in the scale as the Great Depression, but maybe we are heading somewhere like that? <laughs> Well, I know that the, I think economically there's getting to be a bigger divide, like the middle, middle class is becoming kind of a non-existent thing, and that's, that's kind of been the way it's been for a couple of years, so, um, unfortunately, uh, that's, that's kind of been an issue, so I, you might be right, I, I don't know, jobs are, they're out there, but they're just not that great, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, that's why I've been kind of curious about, like, because uh, also you were saying earlier with the whole death being like a passage to life. It's because um, it also relates to when I'm writing the stories because um, originally this was supposed to be a story of the Frankenstein family, of, uh, and it, it kind of re- it just made me start thinking that a lot of these thoughts are going into the writing of the story, which in a way is probably the, the scariest thing that I'm writing ever compared to everything else because even these actions could be considered kind of blasphemous because because. Uh-huh. Uh, well, you know the story of the, the original Frankenstein where, you know, someone dies and they bring him back to life, that of type course. of thing. So, um, what I'm, what I'm thinking about and what I need to prepare myself for, like, in the future is that I'm kind of wondering if, like, how will, like, uh, how will I achieve adulthood? Like, who will I marry? Like, whose children would I have? And then the time comes when you're, well, let's say you do have children and they do grow old enough. How do you prepare them for your own eventual death? Like, how do you guide them? Because, um, the, the reason I bring this heavy stuff is because, um, I gotta keep it quiet, is because, you know, my grandma is the one that passed away, and my mom is, like, taking it hard, and uh-huh. one of the things I'm kind of wondering is, like, how would I, because I took it hard still with grandma, but now, you know, will I take it even harder, the fact that I gotta witness it again? Uh-huh. Like, this time, much more closer, and then the cycle continues uh-huh. with, you know, the next generation. Uh-huh. 
Um, yeah, that, that is that is pretty heavy, man. But it's a legitimate question. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I haven't like had really too many encounters with it, but I remember uh, my grandma died like uh, when I was about fourteen, and that was like my first real big personal experience with death, and it was something that. Like, it was kind of something I didn't fully process for a long time, uh, because it, death was something, I don't want to, I don't want to say it's something that wasn't, like, talked about and it was, like, ignored or anything, but it was like, ah, oh, it was, it's not a big deal, it's part of life, but I think as a young kid I still had a hard time processing it. It was only until years later that I kind of began to realize, wow, you know, I, I miss her, I wish she, I wish I could kind of go back and, you know, be around her more, and that's something that has been on my mind, and I think going forward and, and trying to be aware maybe if you have kids or something or you know, trying to prepare them for that is just to kind of be honest with them and uh, you know I say that it's kind of okay to be upset about it and it is a part of life but that doesn't mean you can't talk about it because I think one of the things that I've been kind of realizing uh, dealing with uh, some of my own issues um, is that like I said we don't really talk a lot about the things that bother us like you know like it's um, in our society it's like it's not really deemed uh, appropriate to like show much emotion about anything like we have to pretend like everything's fine all the time and that's why people don't talk about death you know I and mean, even though it is a, a scary and upsetting thing it's like we you know we might joke about it I, I think you can have a sense of humor but you know not, it depends on you know your religion and your your uh, how your perspective on things is so you can't say exactly you know how you can prepare everyone for it but I guess you just have to say how determine how you feel about it and then if you feel comfortable enough with that you can kind of pass that along to future generations and you know they'll take it the best they can and, and you know and it's not going to be perfect but it, it, that, that's probably one of those age-old questions man like how do we how do we deal with uh, mortality you know the, the question that I think everybody has on their mind um, well, on to some level but I, we, we don't talk about it that openly that's one thing that's a little different, I know, about like a lot of Eastern cultures, I believe, is that uh, they're they're much more open about it, and they're, they're not as worried about it, but there's also a stronger family dynamic. Uh, people take care of each other more. <laughs> like in, in the U.S., we're kind of, I think we're better than we used to be, but there's always been that very uh, uh, selfish, you know, focused attitude, kind of like pushing everyone else aside uh, to do, you know, to achieve as much as you can. And, and there's the whole, you know, captains of industry hundreds of years ago, screw everyone else over. And then our country kind of has a long history of doing that. Um, so I, I think I think that we just have to kind of continue to work to be a more open society and communicate better, better with each other. And uh, I think, to be honest, uh, that's one thing that shows up in fandom a lot. Like when we're having discussions about that, I think that communicating about the stuff that we feel passionate about is kind of like a conduit for how we feel about things. And sometimes, you know, those conversations about, like, an anime or a comic book or whatever can get kind of heated because they're tied into how we feel about things and those characters and how they're connected to stuff in our life and our belief system. That's why sometimes when people get really, really sensitive about, I guess, like, uh, you know, when somebody had says, like, oh, you like that episode or you like that show, and some people, you know, we've seen would get into huge arguments about it. But I think the problem is... They're arguing about that stuff, but not that's not really what's bothering them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, and I think I think that's just one of the interesting things. Like, remember, we kind of want to move into it. I guess to move into a slightly lighter topic um, was kind of like the there was that last year. There was a lot of like hateful stuff, like with the the Ghostbusters movie. Uh, like you know, like you said, everybody kind of was really hating on the fact that, you know, there was obviously going to be this remake of this classic film, but that wasn't really what people were focusing on. People were focusing on the fact that it was an all-female cast. You know, that there were literally, like, lots of people that were being hateful on it just because of that. And there might have been, there were, there might have been problems with the movie, but the fact that there were so many people that just, like, were literally, like, tearing it apart just because of that, I thought was ridiculous. I mean, mm. What do you think about that? Well, from the sound of things, as I, I know we talked about this before, like, um, yeah, it was in your podcast where I briefly mentioned the, the social justice warrior thing where it seems that, you know, it seems that you're supposed to be good people by, you know, addressing all these problems, but at the same time, now I'm thinking, then why is it, like, why are those same people hated? And the more I observe from an outside perspective, it seems that, um... They're they're not necessarily um, 
bringing out faults because they want to, like, you know, for, like, a more heroic state, but more for uh, just the attention. And I, I kind of feel like Ghostbusters are like that, because people say, like, oh, if you don't like this movie, that means that you hate women, and then, you know, women <laughs> you know, women should be free to do everything. Which You know, it's true, but the way people were going on about it, it just seemed that it was just this weird... Like uncomfortable time in human history. It was for months, right? In cinema history, history. Film yeah, history. yeah. I mean, it's just got kind of like cool because this is sort of like a kind of raises the questions for later, like the whole recoloring of characters as well. Yeah, yeah. Like the a lot of the the recasting and the yeah the the race stuff. That's true. That's mm. true. Um, I mean, I don't know when it comes to something like Ghostbusters. I mean, I I, I will. I mean, I'm gonna say it here. I am not like the most diehard Ghostbusters fan. Like I think it's a it's a good movie, mm. uh, and I don't think it really needed to be remade because it's such a it's such a unique film that was very much a product of its time and yet timeless. So making a remake was kind of a problem in and of itself. But I think that people did kind of just focus on one issue and, and just that kind of took took away from it. Um, mm. But uh, recalling of characters, do you do you mean like uh, like reinterpretations like by um, race or ethnicity, or do you mean something else? Yeah, stuff like that, but also sexuality. Oh, you mean like Thor being a woman, <laughs> or stuff like that? <laughs> no, no, that I didn't, like, well, that I kind of knew about, but no, because this one is not, like, a big deal, I think. What do you mean? Because, well, the one what I'm about to mention, because this is something I just happened to come across, is that, um, there was a Saturday Night Live sketch recently about, um... About these two, about these two lesbian comedians that are going to like uh, Th- Themyscira, and they kind of saw this as sort of this like sexual paradise. And but while the you know the women care, while the Amazons there clearly weren't like in that direction, they were just kind of like dumbfounded by the idea of like, what do you mean, <laughs> girl on girl type of thing? So uh, what's a lesbian? <laughs> yeah, it's just like like because I don't know. Because now I'm kind of wondering. How would people, like, treat that nowadays? Because um, I was watching this episode of He-Man where it was sort of a similar thing about the whole gender equality. And But now I'm thinking, okay, we thought of, like, the whole gender equality thing, but now you threw in the whole um, sexuality equality, too. Like, how does this, this... I guess this is something we're still experimenting because... Um, let's put it this way. I- I'm pretty sure a few years ago, when people, when a guy would open a door for a girl, it would just be sort of like, you know, just a gentleman thing. But now it's getting to the point where someone opens the door for them, they think like, hey, I could open it myself. Why you don't open it for me? He's like, or yeah, you're, or you're just trying that, to hit on me. Type that's of a tricky thing. one. So it's no, sort of no, like no, no, that's a tricky one. Well, he's, he's, um, he's, there's no, I know what you mean. That's one of those like politically correct things where there's no like real established answer for it because there's the whole. The idea of chivalry, but then the idea of whether or not it's necessary. Uh, my, I'll tell you what my solution is. You want to know what it is? Just ask? <laughs> what? Well, no, I don't ask. See, the thing is, uh, well, mm. I, if I have the opportunity, open the door for anybody. Like, mm. I mean, if it's like at a gas station or something, like, you know, if it's man, woman, old, young, like, I try, if I have a second and I open the door for somebody, you know, that's just a nice thing. That's just a nice thing to do. I don't think it has to necessarily be implying somebody can't open it's just like hey you know you're you know, sometimes the doors are heavy what the hell it's people if people always appreciate that people yeah. always appreciate holding the doors so that's what i say just do the nice little thing it doesn't have to be a big deal you know what i mean mm-hmm. that's um, the way i look at it but I don't know, that's you're just, right though that well that's just what i'm thinking because uh in this he-man episode let, let me continue because uh it starts off with adam and and tila and, you know they're going to this place to explore and there's this like invisible wall and there's these women that they see Adam and they, since, automatically, since he's a man, they just capture him, like, for slave, okay. for slave work, okay? So, and then in the next scene, you see Tila and they kind of, and you would think, since she's a woman, they would just let her in, right? But it's like, no, you must be a spy from this, <laughs> well, since she said that she's from this other kingdom. So I'm like, oh, come on. And then, so she proves her worth by surviving their attacks and then I'm thinking, oh, okay, we will let you in. And then they, they invite her in. And then the queen is there, and then... The thing is, though, I just kind of wish there were some things that... They never addressed in the episode, which they could have, is that um, 
But this queen was mentioning there's no king here. Like, all the men are slaves. and They just do, you know, labor. That's all they're good for. It's too much work for us women type of thing. So, But also raises the question, how did you guys, you know, dominate... How did you women dominate the men in the, to begin with then in this story? But, okay, ignoring that, so... <laughs> The thing is, Tila could have easily said that since she only has a father, she doesn't have a mother. Well, well, we know who her mother is, but that's a secret. But the point yeah. is, like, all her life, she just known her dad. She never brings that up, mentioning, no, like, my father, like, is a kind man. Like, she loves, he loves me, and, like, she's brought me, like, so many things. Or it would have been more interesting also if there was another character, a woman character that had a brother. It's like, I don't see my brother, like, that way as, like, this inferior person. Like, you know, but, you know, they never bring that up. But... Well. The, the point is, though. Oh, hero, you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> the point is, what kind of ruins the message a little bit of this episode uh, is that uh, that the queen uh, always had a thing for one of her slaves, and <laughs> oh, and she never no. really does. It. <laughs> and that's sort of the reason why they changed their mind. Well, oh, so that's so okay. So it's just because somebody falls in love. Well, I mean, oh, that's so cheesy. But then that's again, so cheesy. I don't know. Oh, but then man. again, like, so like you know, it shows that the power of love can overcome everything. Well, okay, all right. Well, you know, can, can we just take a sidebar here? Because I want, I want to get your opinion on that. When it comes to the whole, when because, it comes well, to the whole power of no. Well, okay, I think it's it true to, though. No, no, okay, okay, okay. You do think the power of love is a legitimate thing? Yeah, but in can, a way, when okay, it, okay, it's fine. not like a all magical all right, thing. All right, okay, okay. Okay, no, no, it sure it is, sure it is. No, 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 okay, okay, well, this is the thing. All okay, right. what? I, I, okay, philosophically speaking, yes, I think that the power of love is the most powerful thing. I'll go on record saying that. But in a story where you're like, it's like a shonen battle series or He-Man or something, and they see the power of friendship and the power of love, people make fun of that all the time. Do you think they should not utilize that in stories? Like, remember in, in the Power Rangers movie where they literally, they find the power of love and they just bring Zordon back by <laughs> holding hands? Like, do you think, is that excuse? They need to, they need to portray it in a, writing? they need to portray it better. It's not like, you know, it's not like Care Bears where, well then again, I don't know if Care Bears actually ever did like a very serious matter where That's love overcomes. Really dark Care Bears. <laughs> Because, I mean, they always battle the forces of satanic evil, and it's all, you know, there's that. Well, okay, so literally use the power of love beam to fight the devil, as the Care Bears do, apparently. Yeah, well, the thing is, though, the problem with the He-Man episode is that, okay, so, you know, it's a nice message that the men are free and all that, but the thing is, there's, like, a really corny scene where, because there's this mine, mining area where all the men are there, and it's going to collapse, so the women had to work with a man, and then they're just random dialogues thrown out in the air, saying like, "Hey, working with men is actually pretty good. It's pretty helpful." So, it's like, so it's, and then well, everyone just I don't know, and then they just start like having this whole, you know, um, like, so I guess it's like a bit of a miracle to say that the men didn't just rebel then and there, thinking you know, like the the berserk route. We just leave it at well, that. Okay. <laughs> All right, here. Hero. Well, oh. okay, well, let's be honest here. Let's take a step back. You are watching He Man. You do realize that, right? I you know, know but, not, but here's the thing. It's not exactly the best written show. I know it's not exactly, like, you know, <laughs> realistic in terms of, like, human, like, wicked nature and Dude, all that they have, stuff. They have tanks that have square wheels. Yeah, I know I mean, that. I know on. that. <laughs> this is the world you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but they always hint at some dark undertone. And I'm gonna mention this other episode, two other episodes in a bit. It's that because they always, obviously, just a no kill rule, but they always mention slavery. Slavery is a thing in He Man, so that's kind of like I think that I might be know, worse. He Man gets dark. He Man gets dark. Well, the, well, you know the thing about He Man is that you know I really would like a more like serious interpretation, like called Adult Swim or something, because really Skeletor summons demonic monsters all the time, man. Like, it's scary. Yeah, he yeah, does, yeah. actually. Okay. It's better voiced by the same guy who talks like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, like this, will be, uh, <laughs> this is the Necromonicon, He-Man. It will summon the most foul demons, and this here is a bailet. It will bring forth the God Hand, and Griffith will <laughs> rape you, He-Man. He will rape you in front of your kin. <laughs> You're joking, but I mean that's that's not too far off actually. It's not too far off. Skeletor, like he man, you will become my internal bitch slave. Oh God. Lord Aku has nothing oh. on Skeletor. I am the true master of masters. I am the dark masters of the universe, he man. 
<laughs> Aku will become my slave. No, come on, you know that's all an act. He's just a really nice guy. He just wants to I must save the children for Christmas. <laughs> I am not nice. <laughs> fights. Fights are fun. <laughs> <laughs> the Skeletor was just too good in that uh, episode. Just like, no. Oh, Skeletor, you're becoming like everyone's favorite character for this episode. <laughs> I, I honestly forget what it is, but like there are there are some episodes where you see that Skeletor really isn't that bad <laughs> compared to like some of the other threats, because sometimes they have to work with him, you know. Yeah, this, I was surprised about the... Oh, okay, I'm going to go to this other episode, because I was surprised that there was actually other villains besides Skeletor every now and then, because in this one episode... Oh, yeah. There was this dragon, well, well, actually, the whole problem starts off with Skeletor turning Man-at-Arms into this crystal stone thing. So they meet, he and Tila meet this dragon, and this dragon was straight up racist to them. <laughs> yeah, because he was saying, like, uh, like humans, but in a way he was speaking truth, it's like humans are like these foul, evil things, and they, they steal and betray each other, so... You know, he's kind of right. <laughs> but then, the thing is his deal for them, he says, he wants, I want you to cut down this living tree so I could see it burn in my fucking, like, fireplace. Oh, God. So I'm like, and so they go to meet this tree, and I'm kind of wondering, hey, man, are you actually going to do this? Are you actually going to go kill that sentient tree? <laughs> and then, so uh-huh. you see him, he meets the tree, and he talks to the tree, and the tree is saying, like, you know, I owe man in arms a favor for many years ago, he has spared my life. And he says that, you know, every... Almost every natural living thing was because of his existence. And he said, when I die, I want you to plant these seeds. So he was prepared to give away his life, to, you know, just to save this other one. Happy, and then he Man's like, I can't do this. It's like, oh, oh, thank you, he Man. I can't <laughs> it's like, do this. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like no, well, I can't. Course, no, no, but he Man's like the most lawful good guy. He's like, he yeah. would never do anything like that, honestly. He's, he's yeah. so good. Yeah. He's the epitome of good. Yeah, that's why I kind of liked about it. It's like, you know, he's the symbol of good. <laughs> Like, actually, let me ask you here. Do you think He-Man is more good than Superman? I actually was gonna bring that up is. because I think he, I think in most incarnations, he, see, He-Man has remained that like loyal. What would you call that? Like chaotic good <laughs> or lawful good? What is this? What is He-Man? No, yeah, yeah, he's law. I, I mean, I want to say he's like neutral good because I don't think he follows like a particular code, like a religion. But he's like straight. I, he's like just straight good. Man, he's good. <laughs> he's good. He is good he's personified. Good. He, he is just the light side, man. He is like <laughs> I am like the, the force. <laughs> I am the literally. He is the light side of the force for real. Yeah. So, so at the end, so yeah. So in the end, in the end of the episode, he goes back to the demon. I mean, the demon, the dragon, and the dragon uh-huh. saying, "But you broke your promise, and I guess, and I will follow my word." Like I received your punishment, and his punishment was that I, he would banish them to the <laughs> to the land of demons. So I'm like, I guess that means hell. But even then, he's saying, like, even your honesty was, like, basically, he just like T-Man's honesty. And it's, like, the fact that he kept his word, like, yeah, I failed it. So, yeah, I await my punishment. And then he's, like, you haven't seen this in, in like, in, in eons or whatever. It's, like, it's, like, I will give you this gift. But then he's, like, will never bother me again. <laughs> it's, like, shit. You know, uh, one of the things that I really like about He-Man is just kind of the eclectic, like, it's such a great combination, because you've got the whole sword and sorcery, like, fantasy epic, but it's also, like, sci-fi. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's literally everything combined. It's kind of like Dragon Ball in that way, man. It's like, there's just such a, it's a very unique world, and they do actually go on other planets, and, you know, they, they interact with all these different cultures. It's, it's pretty cool, yeah, honestly. Well, well this, there's this episode that's a really good one where, well, well, there's several good He-Man episodes, but in this one... Um, yeah. th- there was a star that fell to Earth, which was like this mystic, magical power or something. I don't know. Basically, he's got to wind his hands on it, and He-Man gets to it first. But and there was that this really good scene where He-Man is like, "Yes, I can feel its power, Skeletor. I can see why you would want it. It's very p- alluring." And he, and Oracle's like, "He-Man, what are you saying?" It's like, "He's like with this, with this, I could eradicate all evil in the world." Oh, that's dark. I know, and it's kind of just saying, like, He-Man, you're becoming evil. I can sense it within you. <laughs> so I was like, uh, it was just like, uh, a, like I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's like, He-Man? <laughs> like, well, no, like, no, no. So, <laughs> sometimes the He-Man does take some turns. Like, it, it, it does go to some heavy places. And by the way, um, there is a character kind of death thing, but I won't tell you about it if you haven't gotten there. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I got that far, because I, I did see one episode that could potentially be considered... 
the last one for a lot of He-Man fans because um it was a leverage trap where Skeletor like uh takes his tr troll or goblin I forgot what he was but he, basically he doesn't have a heartbeat so he, he disguises himself as a human being and makes He-Man think that he killed him. Oh, you saw that one? Yeah, that's considered to be the highest rated episode. Yeah, it's called like the <sighs> the, the, the the meaning of power. Something, or something. along those lines. With great I mean... power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, because cause I just love how they clearly acknowledge, like, they, they don't sugarcoat, like, something along the lines of saying, like, oh, like, he's, he's banished to this area or this zone, or, you know, but no, he just straight up says, he checked his heartbeat, and he said, this man, he's dead. And, so, like, and then, and then man's like, oh, shh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't deserve this power. <laughs> I killed somebody. I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's like, oh no, he I know, and he actually, and he literally throws away the power. It's yeah, like, I don't have the power. Like, I am not worthy of the power. They're like, oh sh I don't <laughs> have the power! <laughs> I, I, I just felt, even though I knew that the whole trick was going on, I just felt genuinely sad because I never saw He Man, like, you know. That's sad. Be sad. <laughs> so that's the thing. It's like, I never <laughs> seen him sad. <laughs> His feeling sad made me feel sad. It's like, oh man. <laughs> He man. <laughs> no, no, no. That he, that he, he, that's a genuinely good one. He does yeah. get really impacted by it. Yeah, because I was like, that's like right. the natural course, man. You know, you know when your hero will kind of test yourself. But then it just makes me wonder what he, what if he did accidentally kill someone? But we'll <sighs> never know because that's the closest he man's ever gonna go to that. He won't allow itself to go darker. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that plenty of people have been killed in those battles. You know what he does. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Yeah, well, I don't know. You never know. I mean, some people do, you know, slavery is a thing in He-Man, so... Uh, it also makes me feel a little uncomfortable by the fact that, you know, Eternia's own king, that, like, they have a dungeon. They clearly do. So... Um... <laughs> well, actually, this raises a good question that I wanted to bring up about the whole... Um, okay. Because this, this could relate to... Pretty much any type of superhero, especially with Batman in this case, because in He-Man, obviously, you know, in, in the show's point of view with the producers and all that, like, obviously there's no kill rule because, you know, we can't go that violence for the kitties and all that, but, but yeah. here's the thing though, because I remember there's several episodes of He-Man where he does, he purposely saves some, like, a villain's life and sometimes they do repay him for his generosity because they're like, He-Man, why would you save me? I wouldn't do that for you. Like, I believe there's good in everyone. But then at the same time, he would say it, but, but if there's ever a next time, <laughs> like, mm, I may not be so nice. <laughs> 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 it might not be so nice next time. Like, He-Man will shank you a second time, <laughs> but no one ever crosses him a second time. <laughs> so that's why I said, like, oh, I'm a good guy that's now, He-Man. Like, like, I'll be good. <laughs> but well, When He-Man seems angry, it's like a little creepy, so I, I can kind of believe it. Oh, yeah, it's because he's always, like, such a, like, nice charming dude <laughs> but then when he gets mad it's like well i remember cromarty high school made that joke when you see someone get mad all the time it's no big deal but when you see a nice guy turn mad it's like you're it's kind of uncomfortable <laughs> it's like like for example you see batman go, oh, i'm pretty sure you see superman mad now more than ever now but you know seeing like batman mad, yeah, that's no big deal that being batman mad, that's no big deal you ever see someone like i don't know maybe um What's a goofy character that will be like mad? The Flash or something? Uh, maybe or uh uh. What's a comical character in the show? Like I'm just like eh. Pla Plastic Man or something. Yeah, maybe Plastic Man or something. You know him getting mad. It's like either people will find it too funny or they'll just find it straight up uncomfortable. It's like hey, well done. But, uh, well, anyways, what I'm going with that is what he managed, because, you know, there are times where he doesn't want to kill Skeletor, but he's, he does mention about wanting to, like, imprisoning them or serving his time or something. So I'm kind of wondering, do you think the reason why Batman and several other heroes refuse to kill characters because they rather reserve that for the law itself? Since, you know, they're, they're trying to say, like, they're not above it? Um, that it's someone else's yeah, duty? probably. I mean, Batman's kill rule is one of those things that, you know, comes up a lot for discussion, and we know the real reason. But I think, I think with, yes, I think with most superheroes, it's like we, even though we kind of bend the law anyway to help people, we do want these criminals to face justice. So say, if the Joker or somebody did get the death penalty, which amazingly never happened because it's insane, you know, and like, then they'd accept it. But like, 
you know, that, I think there might have even been a comic where he had to, like, fend him from getting the death penalty because it was one crime he didn't commit, and Batman had to, like, investigate it or something and to get him off, and, like, that's, like, they care so much about the law, which is, I, especially for Batman, because the Gotham PD was so corrupt for a long time, and yeah. the justice system was so corrupt, I don't even know how, how much that held up, but yeah, I guess you're right, I think it might just be faith in the law enforcement yeah. to what trying to go for it. Yeah, no, I mean, other places I understand, but, you know, corrupt Gotham, why take the chance, yeah. Batman? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, well that's but then again, was darker, you know? yeah. But then again, with Batman, the whole idea is to like create this, you know, corrupted free society. That's why they have to like get the right people. You know, that's the whole storyline of Harvey Dent. You know, yeah. You know the 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 White Knight or the Light Knight. I forgot what he was called. <laughs> was it the White Knight? He was he was the well, he was Gotham's White Knight and the Dark Knight, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, because um, because because we've seen different interpretations of Batman, especially if you take like Raven the Bold and Adam West Batman. You know that one. You know the law is good. <laughs> There's no corruption there <laughs> compared to you They're know. Just incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <They> just suck. <laughs> oh no. Well, that's true. Commissioner Gordon doesn't fucking do anything in that series. <laughs> no, not not Adam West. I mean, he's like literally. Remember, like in the movie, Batman's like, "Why are you even here? What do you even do?" <laughs> You know, maybe I should be commissioner, and I'll be the judge, and I'll be the mayor. I will do everything. <laughs> I'll be the chef. <laughs> you guys don't do anything but call me anyway. Exactly. Yeah. I'll be the chef. Yeah, that's it. That, that's another good example of a character you don't normally see angry, but when he does get angry, it's like... Scary. Yeah, because I remember even in the in the live-action movie when, uh, when Bruce Wayne is kidnapped by the Joker, Penguin, Riddler, and they're wondering what happened to, like, what happened to this... I forgot the name of that woman, but that Russian woman. What happened to her? It's like, oh, what well, did you like to know, Batman? It's like, if you hurt her, I'll hurt you. And it's like, just goes fucking insane. <laughs> it's like, you know, before Michael Keaton said, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. I believe, nuts. I think Adam West did it best. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, Batman. Uh, yeah. I'm like, holy anger management, Batman. <laughs> mm -hmm, totally. Like, now you're right. I think that's one thing that's kind of effective is when they switch it up because... You know, you're right. That shows that there's really higher stakes when they do something like that, too. And like, oh, wow, like, this must really be bad, and this character really means business yeah, now. Well, while we're on the subject about, like, you know, morals of the 80s, but how is Lionel? Like, is he like that, similar to He-Man, too? Uh, yeah, I think Lionel's, like, a little more temperamental. Like, he's not quite as, like, cool and collected as He-Man is. Like, I'll admit, I'm not, like, the, the most versed in Thundercats, but he, he is along the lines of, like, an Optimus or a He-Man or, um, whoever the main G.I. Joe is. Like, all those guys, they're yeah. very, like, you know, very yeah. good, very, you know, generally kind of upbeat. That's just kind of the theme, like, all the 80s stuff, like, well, most of the Turtles, you know, mm -hmm. all like that. So, well, the point is that basically, yep. even even out to his prime, does he have a kill rule? Because, I mean, I know Megatron doesn't, but what about the, uh, the Autobots? Do they uh, 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 seek to destroy the Decepticons, or...? Well, I don't quote me on... The, well, okay, there was a war, and I'm pretty sure that most of the expanded universe for the Transformers, I think they both... I think there were deaths. I think in the original cartoon they strayed away from that, but I I feel like they might have even killed people in the movie. I know I know most modern interpretations like by the time you get to Beast Wars, like yeah, th they'll kill each other even if they're good guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, well, that, that's what you gotta give to Beast Wars that they actually did go the extra mile with the, you know, with it felt more military. The more you look at that show, <laughs> especially with the well, command centers. Uh, well, I guess that was the natural progression because the Autobots, from what I understand, were just like worker robots. Like Optimus Prime was just a normal worker guy. I guess he was just really good at his job. But, but the Decepticons were automatically militarized. Um, mythology, that's pretty interesting. Actually, like the divide, I guess, between like the ancient robot gods. It's pretty crazy yeah. stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah I think more yeah, military. Yeah. Well, because these here, because the heroes of the eighties. Because I'm actually thinking about a topic. Well, this could be a different topic now because. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna before I lead to this, I'm gonna segue into a little bit with Gotcha Man because they're from the '70s, though. Because um, when they were brought over okay. here as Battle of the Planets, they did remove as much killings that the heroes would do. However, to my surprise, um, as I found some episodes online, Battle of the Planets actually did keep some civilian deaths. 
Okay. So they actually did show that. They even showed like a funeral and everything. So I was kind of surprised that they kept some in, but they didn't keep all the deaths because there will be times where the villains would evacuate, you know, the the base from <laughs> before it exploded or something like that, or even the heroes and even a major death that almost happened. Like, it, it, the, all the scenes were there in tab, but then the very end, by a, just a few lines of dialogue, it kind of ruins the whole, you know, heroic sacrifice. <clears throat> so, this leads to what I'm going to ask you in the 80s. Okay, so we have characters like He-Man, okay. Optimus Prime, the Ninja Turtles, Lionel, and G.I. Joe. Yeah. What I find interesting is, you know, that's America's mindset. But in Japan, in the 80s, how do you think people would react if someone like Kenshiro was over here? Because oh he's like gosh. anti that, that, <laughs> hero, dude. That could not have even happened. Can you imagine them trying to like bring North Star over here in the eighties and make him <laughs> with he man and shit? There would be no show. There would just be like dialogue, and they would cut to him transforming, and then oh, they ran away every episode. Every episode, there'd be there'd be like the episodes would be like three minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but I also wanted to take this seriously, like in the mentality type of thing, because I, I, I need to look back carefully on eighty series because I'm kind of wondering is is Kenshiro one of the few eighties um, or maybe even more common shonen heroes where killing was like not a a worry for him at all? <laughs> oh no, he didn't care at all. He was like, if you're evil, you're done. Like <laughs> you're done. Oh, um, maybe that that's a different uh, cultural interpretation of it. Because yeah, you're right in the eighties. Even though there was a lot of action and explosions and violence for the '80s, death somehow really didn't happen. Everybody was really good, and you know it wasn't really that dark. But you know, over there, you got something like Fist of the North Star, where yeah, it's, it's, it's like the complete opposite. And that was considered like shonen. That was basically kids' entertainment. But you had all the bloody, gory death. I mean, it's just, it just just shows that the '80s anime was like a completely different environment. Yeah, because uh, because awesome I, I was trying to think like. Okay, what would happen if He Man met Kenshiro, like, or they met, like, or if He Man's it, well, vice versa, like, what if Kenshiro was Eterni- is in Eternia, or what if He Man was in, you know, 1990X? So, like, how would, you know, <laughs> would the characters be shattered? This is what I'm kind of wondering. Like, would He Man, like, actually <laughs> be corrupted by um, the society of Fist of North Star and actually start killing evildoers, right? or, or would he still hold true yeah. to his morals and, like, not kill anyone and make, like, That's this ultimate prison? So, that sounds like a good fan fiction possibility, yeah. honestly. I mean, it would depend, because, uh, you know, you got a character like that. He-Man would be interesting to see, because you're right, you'd have to juggle those the morality of that, but I also kind of want to see him, like, break down eventually and just cut people, <laughs> you know? But, I mean, you can't sure we know what would happen. He just wouldn't take anyone's shit, and he'd just eliminate everybody's skeleton. <laughs> 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 You're already dead, Skeletor. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> Nanny? <laughs> like, oh, he's ever... <laughs> I hope you can see it now. That'd be great. That'd be a great crossover, actually. That should be a comic or something. I want to see that now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Beast Man, attack this man with the seven scars. <laughs> like, like, what is that? Uh, it's uh, a dragon. <laughs> Like, Hulk Doshinkin is invincible. I can kill any monster, <laughs> man or beast. I've heard of that. Oh, like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and then he's just gone. Oh, what man, kind of I, ancient magic is this, Hulk Doshinkin? <laughs> With his power, I might conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> what if we can imagine a skeleton trying to learn? <laughs> oh, <Doshinken>. God. <laughs> <laughs> Take this, oh, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> oh, the the <laughs> No, but seriously, I was I was actually kind of wondering, like, I would, like, what if they had like a moral argument where saying like, wait, Kenshiro, you can kill this man, why not? <laughs> like, like we must, <laughs> they must serve the court of law <laughs> for them to escape well, I don't know. again. He was kind of mad about. He, he man was like, I'm so powerful, I'm not really worried, so I'm just gonna let people go. Like, he doesn't try to arrest Skeletor. He's just like, oh, Skeletor, and he just lets him run away. He's not worried about him. He doesn't. Normally see him as that big of a threat. It's like a joke, and maybe that's the difference. Where you know, Kenshiro is really powerful too, but some people can still threaten him. I mean, Kenshiro does value life. That's why he does everything he does. That's why he fights so ferociously. And it's not like he doesn't give people a chance. You know, he's like, hey, you know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to mess with me. He does try to tell people, hey, maybe you shouldn't attack me. But at the same time, he doesn't try that hard. 
Because mm-hmm. I think he's deep down, Kenshiro just likes to destroy evil. I think he's just like, you know what? Well, I, Kenshiro well, is kind of like, like... He doesn't really like it, he just feels it's his duty, you know? Well, well the thing is, like, in, in some views, you could kind of see Kenshiro as a little psychotic. Because <laughs> of... Well, he doesn't seem to care, he doesn't care that much about, like, all the destruction he writes of these people. Like, these people are still people he's tearing apart, and just like, eh, they're henchmen, they work for the bad guy, it's like they've made their choice, you know? Yeah, I don't know, it just occurred to me thinking, like, you know, how would that work, really? Because, yeah, especially when it comes to their settings. Because I, I kind of try to picture what if He-Man was... I don't know, would it be okay for Ken, if if Kenshiro was killing others and would He-Man oppose him? And the reason why why I thought about this and to begin with was because, like, since He-Man seems to be, you know, the symbol of the 80s... Like, you know, compared to everyone else, because he does predate, you know, everybody, every of the other characters of the shows we mentioned, and Kenshiro was sort of like the the manly boom of the 80s, because everyone started imitating him. Like, in the, <laughs> so, I, I was thinking, you know, I guess those two would be considered, you know, the manliest icons of the 80s. No, yeah, I, I guess you're right. They, they kind of are. They kind of, when you think manly 80s for America and Japan, uh, that's probably what I would think of. Yeah, so now I'm thinking, how would the, how would any of this work? Because I, I know in the 90s, we wouldn't get guts, and that would be like the fantasy equivalent for... That'd be kind of a neat idea to see <laughs> Berserk slash He-Man. Oh. No, Berserk He-Man would be a good crossover too, actually. That would just work due to all the magic and whatnot. Yeah, it's like, like he's the skeleton man. Is he an apostle? <laughs> Is he one of the god hands? <laughs> <laughs> like mm, black swordsman, you failed. <laughs> you you fail before the majesty of my habit staff. <laughs> and what is this? A bailet? What sorcery is this, Griffith? <laughs> <laughs> you mean I can become an apostle, a god <laughs> member of the god hand? <laughs> No, <laughs> Griffith, you will bow to me, Skeletor. I shall become the ruler of the. I forgot what plane we are in Berserk, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what fantasy um, terminology Berserk uses, but whatever. What's the term? Like, it's, it's just Europe, man. It's, Fal- just, it's also Europe. Let's Falconia and Eternia shall be rule under me, <laughs> the dark master of the universe. Oh, uh, man. I, I don't know. I think that would genuinely work. To be yeah, honest, you know, let's right. give this rolling. Let's let's try to find like '80s equivalents to like anime to the cartoon characters. Okay, so what would be like the Ninja Turtles? Is there a Ninja Turtles equivalent in Japan? Uh, Japanese Ninja Turtles. Uh, hmm. Well, not for the eight. Okay, what are what are some anime from the '80s that have the four characters? Because um, I know that in the '90s there's a couple because it goes by the four. Uh, temperaments or whatever. So I mean, you could say it's kind of like um, Hakusho, mm. but that's nineties. Yeah, that's, that's 90s. what I'm on. Yeah, and not 90s. exactly. Yeah, because I'm thinking, is there a uh, team of four, like specifically? Because <laughs> uh, I, I kind of want to say Kiniku Man, but maybe. <laughs> but even though it's like wrestlers versus ninjas, yeah. but <laughs> so I don't know. And then. You know, there's still, like, G-Man and G.I. Joe. I'm trying to think of, like... Well, then again, Transformers is sort of like, um... I think it's kind of like itself, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's itself, yeah. Definitely. I don't know, so... Yeah, this, this is a random topic I just thought about in my head about the whole, you know, Kenshiro and He-Man <laughs> crossover. No, no, it, it, it's, it's cool, though. I think it works, honestly. I, I think that would be an awesome crossover. Um... I'm trying to think of like some other equivalents though for GI Joe. I I don't know if there are any exactly, but I feel like they definitely tie into each other. Like there's definitely some inspiration either way. Like they definitely they're both really over the top and epic though, for sure, and just in different ways. One's well, kind of PG, one's you know R <laughs> in terms of violence. Yeah, and then you got the whole yeah, Power Rangers. Man, the, he, he, he Man Berserk, He Man Fist and North Star. It's a good crossover. She turned into a comic hero. I want it. You're assigned it now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> 2018. I was trying to, right now, I was trying to think what could Kenshiro say for the end of the episode? <laughs> what PSA? Oh, you're like, what would his lessons be today? Yeah. You'll be evil. You'll be destroyed. You'll be, you'll be 
punished for your actions. <laughs> what goes around comes around, and what comes around is my fist. You, and remember, kids, you have the touch, you have the power. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't point the finger at the phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you know, the sad thing is I really can see work, but he has to be, like, monotone, super serious, no matter how yeah, no. dumb it is. <laughs> it's like... Well, I'm trying to think of something right now. It's like, in today's episode, you see me fight against my my, my older brother, Raul. Now, fights among, like, I know, of course, in real life, you guys don't have superpowers, but fighting among brothers isn't good. <laughs> but sometimes you must, we're just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I have to figure something out. <laughs> but I do like the fact that, you know, the song for the North Star of the 80s should be, you got the touch, you got the power. <laughs> That would fit so well. Touch, literally, and you got the destructive power. Yeah, because um, let me think. Because I, I feel like I could somewhat mash the He-Man intro with Fist of North Star, but then I don't think there's any cringer. <laughs> there's no cringer with it. That would be a good matchup, honestly. Uh, I mean, would you try to do it like create like a an AMV sort of thing? That'd Maybe. be kind of cool. Maybe, Actually. but I don't have a cringer. But the, the thing is with Berserk, that could be kind of easy. With like Puck, could be cringer. <laughs> Cringer. Yeah, it's like, and this uh, is Cringer. Do you cringer. like Cringer, actually, or do you find it to be annoying? Uh, I, I like it. A little I of like both. Battle Cat, though. A little of both, really, because cause I, I don't know when, but I do know that Cringer gets a voice change later. I'm, I'm not sure it's the same actor changing his voice, or... Well, because the voice change, he sounds like even wussier <laughs> than before. <laughs> I didn't know that they changed his voice. Yeah, actually. yeah, because, um... I'm pretty sure they did, because in one in some voices recordings, he sounds like the Cowardly Lion, but then in this other one, he just sounds oh, like a real... Oh, no. Yeah, but then the other one I heard, he sounds like a real wuss. <laughs> I, I didn't... I, I always thought he sounded like a wuss. But you know what, though? <laughs> the yeah. person that I, I always thought they kind of liked that everybody always hated on... What, Oracle? Yeah, I don't mind Orko that much, actually. Yeah, I think I, he's fine. He's kind of useful. Yeah, I don't like him. <laughs> Yeah, he's actually, he's funny, he's, he's cool. I want to see what he looks like underneath the hood, though. Well, you never see that, as far as I can tell. No, you never do. No, it's one episode like where he gun. takes it off, but then they, you know, zoom the camera somewhere else, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, man, the secret will never be revealed. Yeah. Orko goes through power. Well, that's the thing, Oracle's supposedly, Orko's like, man. Orko's supposedly the most, supposedly overpowered in his own home world. So, mm -hmm. hold on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I remember there was, was a robot chicken to the skit where Orko doesn't take any of this crap anymore and starts murdering it. Probably, Orko, but I, I haven't seen too much of the He-Man, like, old robot chicken. Oh, actually, wait. I, I think, uh, yeah. No, they, no, honestly, dude, some of their stuff is, is the funniest. I'll even show you the clip here that we can use this to wrap up on. Mm. Here, take, take a look at this one. This is, this is funny. This is, this is pretty good. Yeah, okay, go to 135 on... On uh, on this clip, you can hear Cringer's voice, and he, and uh, yeah, and he sounds different, in right there. Cause I know I have seen like actual episode clips with that voice too, so. All right, let me let me stop here. You said one thirty-five. Mm-hmm. Right, here we go. What kind of voice is that? <laughs> I've seen actual episode clips with that voice, so that's what I'm saying, that he just started to sound like a little much more woosier than ever. It sounds like he's speaking out of... Oh, God, no. <laughs> Usually he just sound like the Cowardly Lion before you're Yeah, right. but now... But, original. Yeah, I don't know at some point where the... I don't know where the change happens, but I know it does somewhere. So, yeah, I don't know how that evolved, and it's like, no, no, I don't want to go out of... And I was like, no, I don't want to go out of... <laughs> I'm like, oh, Cringer, oh, come on, Cringer, why had to be such a little bitch? <laughs> yeah, that should be the actual clip. Cringer, why you gotta be such a bitch? <laughs> I'm like, come on, Cringer. I mean, you guys like how we talk, he like forces him to become Babble Cat, he's like, no, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, 
Yeah. I don't know, man. I just thought it was kind of dark. Yeah, I know. It's like, he's just like, forced him into know, this bravery. You in battle, man. Like, man. Every day. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I saw, like, um, the death battle of He-Man versus Lionel, and the message at the end just got me cracked, <laughs> just cracking me up. Or they were oh, saying, no. like, yeah, I remember, I'll like... Tell you, man. That's accurate. <laughs> they're saying about the neutering thing <laughs> about the you know and then then battle kind of the end like ah I missed my balls <laughs> <laughs> my balls <laughs> <laughs> just so perfect but yeah let me click this death of He-Man because um, i seen a few the one I saw was the uh, the the Eternia Flit Fet, Fetplix I think yeah because I'm just working on the gym but <laughs> yeah but hold on, let me oh, see yeah, this no. the death of He-Man yeah, let me see. Um, are, are you synchronized with that? Oh uh, yeah, I, I I can I can play. I right, just do a three, two, one, man. I'm good. All right. So one, two, three, play. Okay. No. <laughs> 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 Same right, time, like, on, on. yeah, I know, but at the same time, I feel a little uncomfortable. It's like, no, you can't like bastardize He Man, <laughs> but it's funny. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's too easy. Jokes write themselves, dude. It's so good. Uh, and you know, he's one of the few, one of the few great shows where he announces his name every commercial break. He Man. Yeah. Paying attention. <laughs> uh, all right, dude. Well, uh, any final thoughts before we wrap it up? I don't know, we just, we kind of went all over the place. We went from, you know, like, from grim reality to freaking He-Man. Well, you gotta, and sometimes you need some He-Man to lighten things up, you know? <laughs> See, it shows, and you know, He-Man, like, you know, he made a difference. <laughs> he did, you know, he made a difference to me, and I'm glad you've been enjoying it, man. Now, to keep watching it, and eventually you're gonna have to watch the other shows, too, and tell me what you think of those. Oh... Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm, I'll let you know, I don't think you'll like them as much, the but... The new adventures of he well, man Oh, God, the, 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 the one in the 90s, there's a reason nobody talks about it. It's so, <laughs> so bad. It's so fucking bad. Sorry, it's just bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Hero, well, uh, I guess uh, we'll sign off, right? Yeah, well, I'll give you the recording, like, so that way you can post it on your channel, and then I guess I'll...
pulse it on a phantom or mine. I don't know. We'll. Oh, okay. We'll cool. Yeah, yeah we'll man, yeah, so I can't think of any final thoughts besides, you know, just the fact that we just went all over the place. Went all over the place. Yeah, I just... <laughs> well, over... isn't that the way it always is? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that's it for this squeeze called. The, the anime hero fans and group Merlin the Mighty Falcon Punch podcast. <laughs> yeah, coll- and whatever. friends, collab channel, and friends. whatever. And whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll see you, man. Later.